Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. We glorify you. Hallelujah. We give your name glory. Honor and praise is due unto the Almighty God. We just thank you this morning for being in the sanctuary here at Providence Church of God in Christ, 1210 Montlou Avenue in the city of High Point, where our pastor is Pastor Marshall Newsom and Lady Angela Newsom. We're so grateful for all of the saints this morning, for the deacons in their places. We're grateful that he has brought us yet to another Christmas season, another holiday season, not just Christmas, but right before this was we were thanking him. And so I'm just thankful for the season overall. This is yet a time of uh, giving and laughter and cheer, and yet we don't forget that there are some people who are grieving. So this morning we speak to you if you are on Facebook, joining us um, by any means of social media, and we say that we're praying for you. We have 8 a.m. prayer here on the phone line, and we pray for those that are grieving. Not necessarily because of the pandemic, just because the holidays bring about a time of remembrance where people don't have their loved ones with them. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning for this time, this time of teaching, for this place, this holy place, for these people, the people, oh God, that have taken up the helm, oh God, to tune in to learn of you. Father, we thank you for the purpose today is that we would hear, see, read, and know that you provide. You provide, oh God, through so many examples, Lord, of the past, oh God, and we pray, God, that you would allow us to open our minds to recollect those testimonies of your provision and then see and move in faith and obey, Lord, this day in this generation in this time that you would so provide for us. God, help us to move when you say move. Help us to go in agreement, oh God, to your word and your instruction. Father, we thank you because we know in the end you're going to bless. In the end, you're going to do more than we could do for ourselves. And in the end, you're going to take us further than we could even go ourselves. Thank you, God, for all things. Lord, this service is in your hands. Lord, say what it is you have to say, oh God, here today, that we will not leave here the same way we came. In Jesus' name, amen <coughs> and amen. Today our lesson is the Lord provides. You've been hearing about Abraham in the past couple of Sundays. And so today is no different. We will continue. Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 through 2, and then 6 through 14. And last week, you were, if you tuned in, you were in Genesis 15. And so Abraham has pretty, you know. You, you can't you can't beat it. I'm sure you can choose your favorite, but Abraham, of course, is uh, one of one of my favorites because um, with with when you look at just his character um, and the, the way God had called him and and worked with him, you know, in his age, I just you know to me it's like just funny because it's saying wow if he can do that in that day, then what is he calling me to do? Um, and he called them to do something great, something great of faith, in, in great faith. And so daily, we as Christians, we have to examine our faith and then others examine our faith. You know, people question your faith sometimes. And so when I hear um, lessons about Abraham, it's interesting because we know that he is called the father of faith. Is that right? Amen. And so today we look at Genesis 22 verse 1 through 2, and I want to read the Amplified. I always say that and end up reading something else. So I marked it out this morning to make sure I stay on Amplified. So we're going to read the Amplified, and it goes, um, verse 1 says, Now after these things, God tested the faith and commitment of Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he answered, Here I am. God said, Take now your son, your only son of a promise, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. 
Then Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on the shoulders of Isaac, his son. And he took the fire, the fire pot in his own hand and the sacrificial knife. And the two of them walked on together. And Isaac said to Abraham, my father. And he said, here I am, my son. Isaac said, look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So the two walked together, say together. Together. together, together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood and bound Isaac, his son, and placed him on the altar on top of the wood. Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, he answered, here I am. The Lord said, do not reach out with the knife in your hand against the boy and do not do nothing to harm him. For now I know that you fear God with reverence and profound respect. Since you have not withheld from me your son, your only son, of promise last verse then abraham looked up say looked up looked up he looked up and glanced around and behold behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns and abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering ascending sacrifice instead of his son I need another pen. I have misplaced my pen, y'all. Sorry about that. I got it. Got it, got it, got it. Amen. And so today we are talking about verse 13, verse 14. Oh, there it is, 14. So Abraham named that place the Lord will provide. And it is said to this day, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be seen and provided. Thank you for that, sir. Thank you for that. And so we're going to look, uh, I always do different. And so instead of walking all the way through this very familiar story, I'm going to uh, walk backwards to build this up. So Flip, if you have in your book, we have um, the Bible application and it talks about us understanding that God demands our obedience, mm -hmm. understanding that God demands our obedience, even when it's hard to do. Giving our best is the um, exemplary study here. It says that as Christians, we will face decisions that demonstrate where we stand and what is truly in our hearts. The God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave his very best. We must resolve as the body of Christ to do the same for him. I wanted to start there because this is a giving season. This is the season where we give our best. We give gifts that uh, reflect somewhat on the significance of certain people in our life. You don't give cars to people who are not significant for Christmas in your life. Sometimes there are people who may not necessarily be of high significance, but they simply associate with you on a day-to-day -day basis, like maybe your housekeeper, your um, the janitor in the school, the person that washes your car. You may just give them a gift card, but you give them something. And so it says here, we are remembering that the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave his very best. Now, doesn't that line up with Christmas? And we must resolve as the body of Christ to do the same. Amen. And so the memory verse that was pointed out here, it said, uh, verse uh, 12, it took verse 12 as the memory verse. It said, and he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Stop. I got you. Neither do thou anything to him. 
for now I know that you fear God, seeing that you have not withheld your son, your only son. So we're talking about the giving, and then we look at the parallel to the Christmas season. There's something about how we celebrate Christmas as the birth of Christ. Is that right? Mm -hmm. We celebrate Christmas as the birth of Christ, but before the, 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 um, the birth of Christ, you had to take some faith and obedience all the way back to why we have Christ. You had to go all the way back to Mary and Joseph. Joseph had to have some faith in his God that when Mary became pregnant, that God knew what he was doing when he told him to stay with her. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Had to be some obedience in Joseph when God sent them away and they were journeying only to end up in what? In a manger, in a stable, with the animals. It was some obedience there, was it? Mm -hmm. He could have went anywhere, I'm sure, but he had to get away because there was shame for the simple fact that she was even pregnant. So some faith and obedience. So the last part in our book is called Dig a Little Deeper. And I wanted to go there. So faith and obedience go together. Abraham's faith in God was obedient to God. Okay, so I want you to set your mind. Abraham's faith in God was his obedience to God. We need both a relationship and obedience to God. Now, God wrapped up a gift in the giving of his son Jesus. But he didn't force the relationship on us. He just left it under the tree. He left it hanging on the tree. You had to go and pick up your gift. And when we're at the end of our sermons today, we say receive. Just receive your gift. And that is the obedience, the start of obedience in your relationship to God. Believe. Deacon Knox, heart all the time. Belief is your belief. And so we need a relationship and obedience to God, okay? And then it goes on to say in our Dig a Little Deeper section, it says both faith and obedience are required. Say required. required. Are required in order for God to work in our lives and our circumstance. It was required that Christ go to the cross. Mm -hmm. Required. It was required that he get up on that third day. Required. Part of the strategy. It was required. It is required of you to maintain a daily talk and walk with God through prayer, reading, meditation, songs, spiritual hymns, and the fellowship of that in the sanctuary with the saints or the fellowship of the saints. That's a requirement. He said, forsake not mm -hmm. the assembling mm -hmm. of yourselves together. And so it said, forsake not. You still have a choice. We're not going to get into that. You know, humans have, have choice. But it is yet a requirement whether you choose to pick up the requirement or not. Okay? So they go hand in hand in order for God to work in our lives and our circumstances. So as we think about Christmas and celebrating Christ, and, and, and there's a denomination that does Christmas Eve communion um, and, and candlelights. So as we think about Christmas and giving to others, I want you to ask yourself, what is it that you can then give back to God? Can you dust off your 
relationship a little bit and make it better? Can you go to the filling station of worship and refill on some faith again? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you just slow down enough from shopping to reestablish some time mm -hmm, with God this Christmas season? And so it goes on to say the child must have faith in the parent and be obedient if they are going to successfully overcome obstacles and grow in life. It is the same with God. Obedience is the evidence of our faith. Evidence. It shows on the outside. It demonstrates. Okay. Faith that succeeds also obeys. Faith that succeeds also obeys. Faith without works is dead, James 2 and 26, meaning faith requires obedient corresponding action. So when you're wondering like, oh gosh, I'm in a bad place this year. I don't know how I got here. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm not in a good place. My money is funny. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So you need to then go back and say what? Have I given myself truly in obedience to God in every area of my life. Why am I here? Am I going through a test? This lesson talks about God tests us. Okay. Am I going through? The question is, are you going through, but not, are you going through, but how are you going through? Are you going through kicking and screaming? Are you going through picking and choosing what you're going to obey, what you're not going to obey? He gives instruction step to the left. You say, oh, I'm going to step to the right first, then I'm going to go to the left. You know, are you in a bad place? Because you're not quite giving of yourself fully, okay? Are you missing the instructions in some way, okay? And we're going to stop at that one. So when we look at today's lesson, I want to guide our minds down the path of what does it take to obey? This is a very good story about obedience. Okay? So that's where we want to go today. Three things that it takes to obey. It takes atten paying attention. It takes coming to an agreement. And then it takes making an announcement. So let's look here and see how did Abraham pay attention. So on the first part of the instruction, we know that we know that we know the characters in the story. We know we've got a son of promise. We know that, you know, Abraham was of age. We know good and well that he was in a place of, um, you know, enjoying at that point. He was enjoying Isaac because he had him and here we say, well, God is speaking. God's voice wasn't strange to Abraham. He knew he was, he was a man of faith. He talked to God all the time. So for God to simply say, take now your son, your only son, and go sacrifice him, he could have done as Jonah did when the Lord told him to go to Nineveh. He could have Ignored him altogether. But he did not. He paid attention. He paid attention, not just listening and crossing his arms and saying, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. The instruction says, take now and go. Okay? He paid attention. Because when he spoke, you know that the words Three times in here it says, here am I, here I am. So that is a response confirming I'm listening, okay? Ask yourself, are you paying attention to the instructions on the journey that God has you on, okay? Then let's look at Isaac. Isaac being the son was paying attention to his father 
because he helped him prepare. He carried the wood. He walked with his father. He paid attention. Not only that, the most important part of attention that Isaac gave was Isaac was paying attention and said, I don't see the animal. <laughs> he paid attention. Most of these teens, and I say most, let me just say uh, this generation of young people, let me say that, I've got two of them, they don't really pay attention. I can see them now. Because you're saying, come on, we're going on a journey, and here's some wood and fire, and they heading to sacrifice the whole pine. Don't even know that they in harm's way. <laughs> But Isaac paid attention. And then once they got there, Abraham paid attention to God again. He had to pay attention to God in such a way or this would have ended tragically, yes? He heard the voice from heaven say, Abraham, Abraham. And I told you to repeat the word, look up. He looked up, so he did what? He paid attention to the voice. There is an organization that we love, the Salvation Army. They started that angel tree. But the Salvation Army makes an announcement. I'm sorry, the Salvation Army, you have to pay attention to the Salvation Army when they open up the angel tree to go and either have your children included or to go and get a name off the tree. Okay, you have to pay attention to when that time opens up. They don't do it all year. And then if you miss getting your children's name or, or your neighbor, because you know they need help, you miss getting their name on the tree, they are look. You know, then you go and find another angel tree somewhere around the community. But they make, um, the uh, they, they set out and open the market and, and you have to pay attention to what timing to participate in the angel tree. Somebody say timing. Time. That timing is open and then there's a deadline. Okay. And so the things we cannot pay attention to. We have to bring out the, the other side of this too. The things we cannot pay attention to. Is we can't pay attention to the challenges. What were some of the challenges? The challenges of Abraham paying attention said, this is my only son. This is my son, like the Amplified said, my son of promise. This is my heritage. This is my legacy. You ain't talking about him. One of these other boys in the village, truly, you ain't talking about my only son. So we can't pay attention to the fact that it's family. We can't pay attention to those things that are significant to our heart. Sometimes you're told to pay your tithes, and then when you get the raise and your check grows, you say, you can't still be paying tithes on the old money. You got a raise, pay some tithes on your new money. You get the big win on those things y'all call the scratch off. Yeah. Uh huh. Pay the tithes off that fifteen hundred. That's significant to you because you thought you was gonna go do something else with that. Uh huh. You have to know that you cannot pay attention to significant things. Somebody come and say that's a beautiful Tiffany lamp. I want, but that's my only Tiffany lamp. You have to let significant things go sometimes. It's called a sacrifice. We're talking about a sacrifice because you don't know the blessing that you would get if you simply separated from some of those significant things. It's those significant things that toss us up sometimes, trip us up, block us from hearing and paying attention because they're significant. The sentimental things, that thing on our shelf, my grandma gave that to me. I think it have some spirits attached to it and you're trying to hold on to it. Some of us go to Africa and bring back some of that stuff. Y'all don't know what y'all doing. 
You ain't studied it. You ain't looked. You done brought back an idol, God. <laughs> idol worship. You and somebody come and say, you need to get rid of that. Honey, do you know what that mean? And they, I paid over there on that trip. No, get rid of the sentimental thing that's close to your heart because you don't know what it carry. So three things we cannot pay attention to. You can't pay attention to family. You can't pay attention to significant things. And you cannot pay attention to sentimental elements when it comes to following the instruction of God. You can't do it. You can't pay attention to death. Now we in a time of a pandemic where many people, many people have left us. Many people, many people have left us. Let us mature to a level where death does not separate us from paying attention to God. There are some who, my brother's one of them, when, when my mama died, he flipped. There are some who get the money from their insurance, can't find them no more. There are some who maybe have a big vision, they wonder where they're going to get the money from. Somebody pass away, they get the money, and their vision's still on paper instead of you investing in your vision. You can't let death block you from paying attention and continuing to serve God and follow his instruction. And so when we look at the what does it take to obey, for those of you that came in, that's what we're talking about. What does it take to obey? We'll continue on to point number two. We talked about you got to pay attention. The second one is you have to come to an agreement. And so coming to an agreement, we see that in the Bible days there were many covenants made. Is that right? Many covenants made. But over here in Genesis 21, verse 22 through 34, it talks about the Lord provides. At, at the close of the previous chapter, Genesis 21, verse 22 through 34, Abraham made a covenant with King Abimelech of Gerar, who had an interest in striking a political alliance with Abraham. Why? Because he could see that God was with him. Upon making an agreement of peace and to dig a well, Abraham staked his claim. We're going to stop right there. So that covenant that Abraham made with the king was just one of many of thousands of covenants made back in that day. You had to come in agreement in order to obey someone. If you don't agree with someone, you think you're going to follow their instructions? Oh, Lord, no. no. Now, you may do that on a job, and you don't agree with what they're saying at work, but that's because you want a paycheck. Uh -huh. But when it comes to children obeying their parents, sometimes we take the time, as good parents should, and we explain to them why you need to agree with what I'm saying and now obey. Then there are times where you don't explain nothing. You get up and you go do what I said do. Because I said do it. Now the Lord could have dealt with Abraham in this way. Mm -hmm. He could have, but he didn't. He said go. And then he said, this is how you're going to go. And this is where you're going to go. So he gave him a little bit of instruction. Mm -hmm. But there was a point in time on that journey, and I remember teaching this some years ago, mm -hmm. actually, mm -hmm. that I said, I wonder, what was that conversation on that journey? I believe it was three days. Is that right, Pastor? Three days. And on the third day? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I can't remember. I thought I marked it here. But I believed it was a long journey. And I just think, what were they talking about? Because it wasn't just Abraham and Isaac. He took some men with it. What was that conversation like? They had to be in agreement because they all kept going. They had to be in agreement because they all were there in the end. And when you talk about 
how, oh, there it is. I highlighted it. I'm sorry. The verses that were left out of the lesson were verses three, uh, four and five. And so here it is. It said, so Abraham got up early in the morning. That's agreement. You got up. He saddled the donkey and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. That's agreement because those two men were still there when they got to the bottom of the mountain. He split the wood for the burnt offering. He got up and went to the place which God had told him. So he went. He didn't end up somewhere different. And here it is on the third day of travel, the significance of that third day. And on the third day of travel, Abraham looked up. He paid attention again. He said, well, I'm here. And he saw the place in the distance. Abraham said to his servant, settle down and stay here with the donkey. The young man and I will go over there and worship God and we will come back to you. So he paid attention and he was in agreement with what God had told him. Isaac could have fought. Isaac could have ran, mm -hmm. but he didn't. Right. When you are going in a mode of agreement toward instruction, an end goal, if you're crying and talking back, you can't quite hear. Mm -hmm. Maybe there was some rain or bad weather along the way and Abraham needed to change their path or sit a little bit and start back going out. If there was a bunch of chaos, surely they would not have heard the instructions on what to do. Sometimes when you're walking in a group and then you say, stop or, or hold coming up when we ride bikes, that's what you say. If you're in the lead, you're riding and you say, um, hold or uh, uh, rock. But if you're not paying attention and riding in agreement to the rules of the road, you're going to be the one we got to go back and pick up because you're right. going to flip. Mm -hmm. Okay? So there had to be some agreement along the way. The third thing is you have to make an announcement. What does it take to obey? You have to pay attention, come to an agreement, and then make an announcement. How is it that we're looking here and say, all right, I don't know where that is, Kelly. Show me, show me, show me. Again, back here when Abraham made a covenant with the king, he not only made the covenant, but he made an announcement. And the announcement that he made was, it says here, upon making an agreement of peace to dig a well, Abraham staked his claim, announcement, by planting a grove in Beersheba. And he named it in the Lord's honor. Mm -hmm. He made an announcement that it is of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was an outward sign in a pagan and idolatrous world that he served the everlasting God. Yes. I'm not here just obeying because I'm just uh, a yes man. Right. We say something else mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm not here obeying just because you one color, and, and, and I know that I'm giving in to you. No, but it's the everlasting God that lives in me, that I am faithful, that I am obedient to the laws of the land. But guess what? The next one that come behind me, everybody going to know that I'm a prayer. Everybody going to know that I'm a worshiper. Everybody going to know that you are dealing with one who loves God. Don't cross me. Because you can't deal with the consequence that comes when you cross me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God's going to take care of his children. And I'm here to tell you now that you may be on a journey that's rough. You may be on a journey that looks like something about to go down. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that that's what they were saying. They said, mm, something about to go down. I don't know just what. You may be on a journey. You say, good Lord, why I got to go this way here? Let me tell you, it's all right. Make an announcement to the family that's trying to deter you that it's going to be all right. Yes. Yes. Make an announcement to those children that keep bucking and settle them down and let them know it's going to be all right. We're obeying God. We're doing this 
as obedience to our God. And then it says, as you go on, it says, Genesis 20, 22 opens up saying, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt and tested Abraham. Okay, he did. When you talk about what that announcement looked like, here you go, wrapping up the lesson. The name of the lesson is that God will provide. God will provide. That's the announcement. So the announcement, let's break it down. God. You have to announce that you are God's child because you can't be ashamed of him in public. You may be the only sign of God that some people see. Mm -hmm. My first message at Providence when we were over at the real estate building was www.god. There's some things that you need and you may just simply have a, just a little flicker of a moment, a, a senior moment, and you act like you don't know which way to turn. www.god. Ask him. Make the announcement to your God that you're in need. Make the petition to your God that you are in need. Speak into the atmosphere, Lord, I need you. I'm sure that Abraham probably had to make quite a few announcements. Talking about sacrificing my son. You have to settle within your soul that there is, there are many sources you can go to, but the one ultimate resource you're going to connect with is back to God. God will. When we talk about the word will, we say it a lot when we're teaching and preaching. We say he didn't say maybe, he didn't say might, he said will. Mm -hmm. And if he will, then I will. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a yes in your spirit. There's got to be a yes in your heart yes, yes. for obedience. Yes. There's got to be a yes in your mind for you to even say that you have faith in something. When you get married, you're at the altar and you're saying, yes, I will. You will. You will. You will. You will. And not just you will while the money is good and your body is holding tight, but yes, you will till death do you part. It's okay to talk back. Yes, you will. And so the announcement is that God will. And not only will he, but he's going to do that thing that providence stands here today and proclaims. He will provide. We say this is the place of God's provision. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Welcome to Providence. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a problem, then you don't need provision. That's right. And so Providence is made up of people with some problems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so we welcome you here as we introduce our God to you. On this Christmas yes. day, yes. the God that we know will provide. Yes. I got some testimonies here. We don't want to bring them on camera today. They may not be ready. But there's some people that's sitting in this audience that can stand and tell you that he will provide. I've got one today that can tell you. She couldn't bend her leg for weeks. And she heard the palpitation in her heart for weeks, the fluid building up. Her leg was sizzling like sausage. She can tell you that she continued to make an announcement yes. that God will heal. Yes. She continued to make the announcement 
that you will operate. She came into agreement with God and she took him at his word and she said, I'm going to stand on his word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She wasn't standing on that leg too well, but she was standing on his word. Yes. And she'll tell you how the doctor said, I don't know. The doctor said, we don't look sonogram in my right well, I don't know. And that leg had to get in order. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will provide. Is that the lesson today? Yes. That's the lesson. The Lord provides. Yes. Pastor talked about in Bible study. He said Christmas holidays should not drive you to drinking. Right. Right. You should not be different on the holidays mm -hmm. as you are January to November. That's right. You have to know that you're going to stand up and be a Christian no matter where you go, no matter how heavy the load get, yes. no matter what your family's saying, no matter the sentimental things that's got to die, no matter what you got to put on the altar, the Lord tell you to drop it, no matter what, you got to have a yes in your spirit. Yes. 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 And you got to be who you are inside these four walls. Yes. All the cell phones now recording. You think they texting their little friends and not paying attention and they videoing you cussing the whole time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kirk Franklin. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. You got to know that your consistency and your faith and obedience to God determines the outcome. Yes. yes. You gonna look up and say, how did I get here? I know how you got there. You wasn't listening. I know how you got there. You wasn't praying. I know how you got there. You was kicking and screaming the whole time, trying to have it your way and convince God that what you wanted was right. Yes. Yes. God don't need no help. Mm -hmm. He don't need no help from you to provide. All he needs is belief. Yes, right. Somebody say believe. believe. You need to dust off that gift of belief in your heart now, and you need to present it again to the Lord. You need to present a new belief that you may have left somewhere back there at the funeral because I told you, you can't let death come between you and God. You ain't been the same since they died. I got it. I lost my mom when I was 21. I know. You ain't been the same. Can't trust nobody. You look up. You said, where my mama's blanket set that she made with her hand. Somebody done stole mm -hmm. all your mama's sentimental goods. Mm -hmm. But what did I say about sentimental things? I couldn't let them things come between me and my family because I know who stole it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. We still talk to them. We still meet them at the family reunion. Want to cut them, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm still the one they say pray for me, Kelly. I'm still the one they say, put my name on the altar. It's okay. You didn't do right. You got some money. I know you're working good. You don't want to pay two dimes to the funeral. I know. But the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. Make the announcement. God will provide. Yes. Don't leave out of here today saying nothing different. God Hallelujah. will provide. Hallelujah. It's simple, but you got to grab hope. Yes. Hallelujah. In this pandemic, we can't trust the government. We know they done provided some stimulus checks. They did. Thank you very much. But when the stimulus stopped, the unemployment stops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to go on back to work now. Mm -hmm. You have to trust and know that God will provide. Yes. We're going to close with the prayer. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to close with the prayer. Hold on, there's one more, one more, one more, one more. One more, Psalms 32 and 8. Let me go to that. I want to share one more scripture with you. Psalms 32 and 8. Psalms 32 and 8. Psalms 32 and 8. Let me leave that with you. Psalms 32 and 8. 
What does it take to obey? We need to pay attention, come into agreement, and make an announcement. The Lord reminds us here today that I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you who are willing to learn. That's the Amplified, who are willing to learn with my eye upon you. You're going into 2022. We're not quite sure what that's going to look like on right. the world side. Right. But I'm telling you now with hope and exuberance that you should know that God will instruct you. Yeah. He will teach you. He will counsel you with his eye upon you. You. He's saying, here am I. He's saying, mm -hmm. I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm watching. Mm -hmm. And you need to rest assured that God will provide. Yeah. Dear Father, we thank you that you always keep your promises to us. Even though we may have to go through some hard times first. Help us to wait patiently in faith believing in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. and amen.